Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation. I'm Yi Fan Sun. The title of my talk is Multimode Soliton Collisions in Graded Index Optical Fibers. First, I would like to introduce the motivation of this work. One year ago, I started to work on the multimode fiber models and I learned by playing numerical codes. What I did is just inject a pulse into a green fiber and check the output spectrum. Then I plot this color map showing the output spectra as a function of the input energy. One day, my colleague Mario came and saw the figure. He was surprised and said, you have the soliton blue shift? Then we showed it to our supervisor, and he was surprised also and said, you may also have the soliton collision. So I started to carefully focus on this problem. I did the simulation and the experiment. It looks pretty similar. So in this talk, I will tell you what happens here why we have the so-called blue shift and the soliton collision. Here is outline my presentation. First, I will tell you what is a Raman introduced soliton self-frequency shift. Then I will tell you the model I used. Next, I will introduce you the relation among soliton frequency shift, group delay, and group velocity of single mode soliton in green fiber. So with this basis, it's easier for us to understand the multimode soliton collision in numerical simulations. Then I'll tell you the uh, experiment and draw the conclusion. So what is soliton frequency shift? We can see it from this example. We consider input pulse with this parameter in anomalous dispersion and inject it into a fiber. So if the input energy is low, for example here, 2 picojoule, we see in temporal domain, this pulse just broaden, and nothing changes in spectral. However, if we increase input energy up to a threshold, for example, 3 nanojoule, and we notice this pulse is not broadened as before, uh, this is because the nonlinearity compensated the dispersion, leading to the formation of the soliton. And in spectral domain, we see the long wavelength tail of the spectral is amplified by the Raman effects uh, at the expense of the short wavelength tail. As a result, a continuous redshift of the soliton occurs uh, as it propagates in the fiber. So we call this phenomenon as the Raman introduced the soliton frequency shift. And now it is for the single mode case. Now the question is, if for the multi-mode case, which model can we use? Here is the model we used. This method consisting in spending the field on the basis of eigenmodes of the fiber. Those eigenmodes and eigenvalues are calculated based on the refractive index distribution of the fiber. For example, if it is uh, green fiber, then they are uh, larger Gaussian modes. And the mode amplitude, AP, are governed by this uh, coupled nonlinear shorting equation. It contains two terms. The first term is uh, dispersion term. It contains a lot of uh, dispersion coefficients, beta. Uh, they are from the eigenvalue of the fiber. Another term is nonlinear term, taking into account the self dampening curve and the Raman effects. And it contains uh, several coefficients. For example, the nonlinear coupling coefficients are from the over integral of overlap of the eigenmodes and other coefficients are from the fiber materials. So now we have the model. We can explore the dependence of soliton frequency shift on modes in green fibers. For simplicity, we start by considering input pulse that just carrying one single mode. In the first case, we inject a pulse with the same parameter as before and only carrying the fundamental modes, LG01 and with a low energy 2 picojoule. So we see in temporal domain, this pulse just broadened, and nothing changes in spectral. Next, if the input pulse carrying the LG02 mode, which is probably by this blue lines here, we notice the pulse propagates slower than the former case, as it has a larger group delay. So if the input pulse carrying the higher order modes, LG3 modes, we see this group delay is larger. From this, we understand the fundamental modes travel farthest. 
this is obvious because the group velocity uh, of those modes or the inverse value of the beta one. So now the question is, if we increase the input energy, what is the situation for the single mode solitol? Here are the situations for the single mode soliton cases. I just increased input energy up to three nanojoule. So we see the first point is in spectral domain. A soliton carrying the fundamental modes has the largest redshift. And this makes sense if we plot the reciprocal value of the effective area of the modes, which are proportional to the nonlinear parameter. Here, the fundamental modes have the largest uh, value. So even these three cases have the same input energy, but the fundamental mode exhibits largest nonlinearity. This leads to the largest redshift. Another point is in temporal domain. Here, the group delay of these cases is contrary to the linear cases as I showed before. A soliton carrying the fundamental modes propagate the slowest. Now we understand the nonlinearity can modify the group velocity of those pulses. But now the question is, can we find the evolution of the instantaneous group velocities during their propagation? For the former three cases, here I plot the group delay as a function of the propagation distance in the fiber. Then, with this simple expression, we can easily obtain the instantaneous group velocity of soliton. So we notice that fundamental modes have the largest group velocity at the beginning of the fiber but its reduced fuzzist eventually has the smallest group velocity. And this situation is similar to other high-order modes. And due to those different evolution of the group velocity, we see the three the solitons have several equal delay points at different positions of the fiber. And here the input energy is 3 nanojoule. If we vary this input energy, and we find this equal delay points between two modes exist at a different position in the fiber. And this is for the single mode soliton cases. But we can reasonably infer that for multi mode soliton with the same power but different mode composition could have the different redshift, uh, group velocity, and group delay. And in general, a soliton carrying the larger portion of low order modes can have the larger redshift, larger group delay, and slower group velocity. So now we can ask such a realistic question related to these slides. If one multi-mode soliton splits in two two soliton, could those two soliton collide due to the different mode composition and the group velocities? To explore multi-mode soliton evolution, we need to quantify our input conditions. Here we consider input Gaussian beam with width w and center shift s. And we normalize these two parameters with respect to the width of the fundamental mode w1. Therefore, by tuning these two ratio here, we can have different mode coefficients uh, for an input beam. For example, here if rw is 2, rs is 0, which means the input beam is centered in the fiber. And in this output spectral evolution, as the energy is larger than 6 nanojoule, we can find the second soliton S2 here due to the soliton fission. And as the energy increases, the redshifts of the both soliton increase. However, if we adjust the value to 2.8 and 0.5, we find this peculiar spectral evolution. And this spectral gets closer than separate and which has a much less redshift compared with former case. And uh, as we increase Rs, we see the spectral start to overlap here, then separate. Continue deviating from the center, the spectral has a much less redshift. And now here what I show you is the output spectral. The question is, how does the field evolve in the fiber? Here on the top two figures, I show you a visualization of the temporal and spectral field evolution versus input energy at different fiber positions. On the bottom two figures are the spectral mode 1 and the sum of other modes. We can clearly see as the energy region between 15 and 22. 
as energy increases, the trailing soliton, which is on the right, exhibits less group delay and less uh, redshift. This is because the energy of the fundamental modes in trailing soliton here decreases, which reduces the nonlinearity. As the energy region between 22 and 25, we can find such a region where temporal soliton collision occur. So now the question is, if we fix the input energy here, how does the field evolve in different positions of the fiber? Here I show you an example of the field evolution of soliton as a function of the propagation distance when input energy is 22.7 nanojoule. We see the soliton splits in two, two soliton in the beginning of the fiber. At this time, we see the power of the trailing soliton, is, which is on the right here, is larger than the power of the leading soliton. At this moment, we would expect the trailing soliton experience larger nonlinearity due to its high power, so that it will exhibit larger group delay. Then the two soliton will separate more, so the collision may never occur. However, the evidence is that they work light. Because the uh, power of the, mm, the fundamental modes in the leading soliton is larger than the trailing soliton you can see here, so that the group velocity of the leading soliton gradually smaller than the trailing one. Then they collide at 1.7 meter. After the collision, the trailing soliton gain more energy from the leading one, including the total energy and the energy of mode one. This leads to the further separation of two soliton. We also did the experiment to demonstrate this kind of collision. Here is the experiment set up. The laser emits 70 photoseconds pulse, and the wave plate and polarizer used for controlling the input pulse energy. As a fiber output, we measure years beam profile, spectral, and autocorrelation. After carefully adjust the input condition, we we'll obtain the experiment result on the bottom. In the figure of the output spectral, we see the two soliton evolution, which is very similar to the simulation result. And this soliton collision also co confirmed by the autocorrelation result. The two soliton get closer as the energy increase. As the energy region between 21 and 23, the soliton is too overlap, so that we cannot distinguish them. But we can clearly see a weak signal at uh, plus minus 4 picoseconds. We think this is due to the uh, collision in one position of the fiber, so that as a fiber output, we detect two well-separated soliton. So in conclusion, in this talk, we show that two soliton with the same power but different mode composition in green fibers could exhibit a different evolution of the redshift, group delay, and group velocities. Under the suitable conditions, two solitons can acquire the same group delay as a specific position in the fiber. And the, the rest shifts and the group delay of the soliton are influenced by the Raman effects, whose impact generally dominant by the contribution of the fundamental mode. And for, for two multimode solitons originating from one multimode soliton fusion, they may collide at a specific position in the fiber for a given energy. This collision leads to an redistribution of both energy and mode content between the two interacting solitons. Thank you.